On this episode of Living the Dream, Jimmy and Louisa travel to Grand Cayman for some of the year's best diving and fishing action yet. After diving for dinner, they cook their bounty right on the boat and then head offshore to tackle some tuna and marlin. Nice. Good job, Louisa. Woo! Big yellowfin tuna here in Grand Cayman. Gosh, what a fish. He's going to come up. He's, he's coming up. He's coming up. He's coming up. Coming up right now. Oh, yeah, baby. That's why we go for the marlin right there. This is Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson. Presented by Salt Life. Live Salty. Ah! Ooh, good fish. That, that's what she was fighting all that yeah. time. Man, what a fish. Wow. Doesn't get any better than Baja. Isolated by the Western Caribbean waters that stretch from Cuba to Mexico's Yucatan territory, the Cayman Islands is comprised of three separate islands and over 102 square miles of mangroves and beautiful beaches. From Miami to Grand Cayman, the largest of the three islands, Jimmy and Louisa take the short flight to the shores of the North Sound, home to the Grand Caymanian Resort. The only oceanfront North Sound property, the Grand Caymanian Resort offers guests beachfront access, a freshwater pool, an oceanfront golf course, and a long fishing pier that juts out onto the beautiful bay. The Cayman Islands has something for everyone, but Jimmy and Louisa know what they're here for. It isn't long after settling in that they're prowling the nearby iron shores looking to hook their first fish. So we met up with Andrew in a parking lot right outside of some iron shore by the ocean. And uh, we jumped a little wall, climbed out onto the iron shore, and made our way out to the edge to make a few casts and see if we can catch any fish. Almost right away, we hooked into a horse eye jack. All right, guys, well, we just got here. And uh, Andrew threw out a squid as I was walking up. And right away, something slammed it. I think we're gonna have a heck of a time landing them off this iron shore. Fighting those fish from the iron shore is not easy because it is slippery there and the shore is very sharp, so you have to be careful with every step you take. Just trying to keep it as high as I can off the rocks right now. I can feel rubbing, man. Woo! Come on. He's on something out. Oh, there he is. Okay, good. Careful, careful. Oh man, huge jack, huge horse eye jack. Wow, look at the size of that thing. Huge son, look at that pressure came out and the hook fell right out. Dude, well done, bro. Look at that. I'm gonna set this here, yeah, I'll hold him for sure. All right, guys, there's the fish. Nice horse eye jack on a chunk of squid. And uh, this one actually had 50 pound high seas fluorocarbon leader on it. I was actually rubbing all over that iron shore. I'm shocked that we were able to land this fish because I did take a little bit of abuse on that leader there. But it's a nice one, man. Look at that fish, about as tough as you're gonna get. Pretty, pretty fish. I'm gonna bring it over here and let him go. I'm watching out for his tail. That's why I'm not grabbing it real hard. Because like all hard tails, you touch that part, you grab it good with your hand, they will cut you up. Man, what a pretty fish. Let me get him back in the water as quick as I can. So after landing that fish and showing him off a little bit, I walked him around to a low area where I could get down by the water and release him. Whoa, that's slippery. Wow, that is very slippery. I'm gonna take my time here because this is super sharp and super slippery. Show you that fish one more time. Woo! Good way to start off the morning. Get a little uh, water here and let him go. Whoa, goodness, there he goes. All right. We'll be back for more Living the Dream right after the break.
Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is made possible by Salt Life, Live Salty, Engel Coolers, the original high performance cooler, Sea Deck, your boat deserves Sea Deck, ACR Electronics, the science of survival, and by American Fishing Wire. All right, guys, so we're back out here at Grand Cayman. It's January, late January right now. Beautiful weather temperature-wise. It's over 85 degrees right now, but it's blowing about 30 knots. It's actually 12-foot seas offshore. We're supposed to be fishing right now. There's no way we can do it. It's about two to four in here right now on the flattest area of the reef. And uh, we're out here with Andrew of Why Not Charters. Lobster season's from December to March, correct? Yep. Okay, and what about conch and the limit on what we're catching? How does all that work out? All right, so conch season opens at the beginning of October all the way to the beginning of May. Um, we're allowed 10 per boat or five per person if you were just swimming offshore. So today we hopefully will look for around 10 conch. On the lobster, I noticed we came across a lot of very murky water, which is normally not murky when we're here. It's yep. stirred up and stuff. Is that where we get the lobster? Are we able to find some out here too? Is it a little harder? What's, what's um, the It's a little harder out in the clear water, mm -hmm. but um, the high heads behind the boats normally will hold a few lobster. Okay. So we should be able to get a couple of lobster in the high heads out here too. Very good. All right, man, cool. Well, let's do it. We'll get in the water and catch some. Sounds good. All righty. As soon as we jumped in the water, we saw conch everywhere. And then Louisa went down and she ended up coming up with two of them. With the conch being everywhere in the area, that's just a really good testament to the law enforcement in the area and the rules that they have set in place to protect these conch so that they're only open certain times a year. They have a certain amount that you're allowed to keep, which is very conservative, which is good. And that's what you want on a small island, and that's why there's a lot of conch around. And then there was this like huge puffer fish, this big blowfish that just swam right up to Louisa and was checking out the conch that she just grabbed. We also saw some barracuda while we were out there looking for the conch and the lobster. So there were some cool little fish that were swimming up on that sandy area as well. After we played around with that puffer fish for a while, we went back to catching some conch. And then we moved the boat a little bit more over another little patch reef. Right away, Louisa spotted a lobster that was kind of shoved up in there. And then Louisa took that snare and started kind of poking and prodding that lobster out into the open so that she could slip it over the back of its tail. And then I saw a lobster on a different head of coral and I went down to get it. That lobster was shoved way back in the hole, so I was trying to kind of tickle it out with that snare and that wasn't working, so I reached around the back with my bare hands. I grabbed the lobster and pulled him out, and luckily he didn't rip my hand up. I kind of grabbed him under his tail and just squeezed really hard so he couldn't go anywhere. And then Louisa went down and got another lobster. She came in right behind it, slid the snare over its tail, and yanked it out of its hole. After we had plenty of conch and lobster for us and the crew to eat for lunch, nice we went ahead and got back in the boat and started cleaning the conch. All right guys, so we caught a few lobsters. We also caught conch today with Andrew here, Why Not Charters. And uh, now we're back on the boat and he has the grill set up right here. We're cleaning the conch right now and we're gonna have some grilled lobster and conch. Delicious. Jacob was preparing the conch, so he was kind of getting it out of the shell. And then after he had got all the conch meat out of the shell, he started chopping up the onions and the peppers and the, the limes and the lemon and all the different things that we had that were going into that conch salad. 
I mean, I know you're not there to smell it with us, but just the smell of those fresh vegetables and the seasoning and the grill going and all that stuff. I mean, it was just making us so hungry while we were out there. And we had some of the best food we could ask for. I mean, conch and lobster is about as good as you can get anywhere in the world. It didn't take very long at all for the lobster to cook. And since we were sitting out there in the water on the boat, I mean, time passed so fast and it was already ready to come off the grill. That lobster was so good, man. It was just melding in my mouth and the conch salad was delicious. And after Louisa and I had a little bit, everybody else just dug in and you know, the consensus was the same across the board. Everybody loved it, just really, really good. And again, that stuff wasn't even caught less than 30 minutes before we were eating. Good on the grill, huh? Incredible. We'll be back for more Living the Dream right after the break. Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is made possible by CNH Lures. Be a winner with CNH Lures. Plantation on Crystal River, the place to stay and play along Florida's nature coast. Cayman Islands Angling Club, come experience sport fishing in paradise. And by Salt Life, live salty. So Louisa and I hooked up with Sunset Divers at a Sunset House, and the plan was to go out and do a two-tank dive. On the first dive, we were gonna be in about 60 feet up to 120 feet. As soon as I jumped in the water, I started seeing fish. I started seeing like uh, little colorful fish and I saw a really big green moray eel right after I jumped in. And he was just kind of checking me out for a little bit, but he didn't stick around long. He started swimming away. He really didn't want to have much to do with me. There were a bunch of pretty little reef fish on this dive and sea anemones. And uh, there were a bunch of schoolmaster snapper as well, which those are really cool fish to see. We also bumped into a sea turtle while we were out there diving on the reef. That sea turtle was so chill, he was just letting me swim along beside him and hang out with him. And he could care less if we were right there sticking cameras in his face. Another thing we see a lot of in Grand Cayman is mutton snapper. We always seem to see a bunch of those on the reef. We also saw quite a few trigger fish and ocean tallies on this dive as well. We saw some of the really big gray trigger fish, which are very common to see on the reef. We also saw some schools of the little black trigger fish. And the second dive was only about 30 to 40 feet deep. Both the dives were reef dives and they were both loaded with fish. I ended up seeing a tiger grouper underneath the ledge and they're one of the prettiest groupers you'll ever see. One of the things I really like about scuba diving is that you can see such a big variety of fish and you can be up close and personal with them and you can stay under the water for long periods of time and check out all the neat little things that are in the anemones and just all the different stuff that's down there that you don't have the time to just kind of soak in while you're free diving. The next morning, Jimmy and Louisa rise early to meet up with Captain Stephen E. Banks of Real Vibes Charters, and they head offshore looking to pick a fight with some yellowfin tuna. Tying on one of these Palomar freefall jigs, even though we're trolling right now, we're up on top of a bank. And any chance I get to stop and jig, we're gonna take that, because there's a good chance we can run into some uh, tuna that way as well. And, uh, also dolphin, wahoo, anything else that is out here will probably hit them too. <clears throat> and uh, I have 80 pound high seas braid on and 80 pound quattro high seas fluorocarbon leader. 
down to this uh, 5.3 ounce Palomar Freefall jig. And uh, that's in the glow color. So this one's pretty killer. Anything silver, I love. And of course, I love glow. So that's a great combo for me. As Steven was cutting up the chum first thing in the morning, Louisa ended up hooking into a fish. Nice. Woo! Good job, Louisa. We could tell right away that she had a Woo! nice tuna on. This is a big fish, guys. Oh, it's a great way to start the day, guys. Big yellowfin tuna. Woo! That tuna was just feet below the boat, and it didn't want to come in. It was doing everything it could to stay out of the boat. Oh my God! What a fish! Bring it up front where we can see it. All right, guys. Check this out. Big yellow fin tuna here in Grand Cayman. This fish is so strong. Pound by pound, in my opinion, this is the strongest fish in the ocean. And uh, they will definitely make you work for it. After throwing that yellow fin tuna in the C&H fish bag, we got our lines back out and started trying to catch another one. And then Louisa's rod got hit again with a nice tuna. Got him. Nice. All Woo! right, Louisa. All right, guys. Another big yellow fish tuna. Woo! These things are so strong. And so am I. <laughs> there you go. That's right. That big tuna was only like 15 feet below the boat when it ended up pulling the hook. Such a disappointment, but you know what? There's more out there and we knew we would get more shots at them. We'll be back for more Living the Dream right after the break. Before the break, Jimmy and Louisa were offshore prepping to land some Caymanian tuna when Louisa's line got slammed. Nice. Woo! Good job, Louisa. Oh my Hi, guys. gosh, what a fish. Check this out. Big yellow fin tuna here in Grand Cayman. And within minutes, Louisa was on again. Got him. Nice. Woo! But this one got away. Within minutes of Louisa's fish pulling that hook, I ended up hooking into a model. All right, guys, well, we got a blue marlin hooked up right now. Oh, my. Man, guys, this is a big fish. We're trying to gain line. We're driving at him, and he's pulling away just about as fast as we're going at him. He's taking line. As you can see, there's not much I can do about it. And then the marlin ended up pulling my hook. Oh. Every avid angler knows the depth of losing a fish leads to a larger determination to hook another, so the crew resets. Unbelievably, almost as fast as he lost the first, Jimmy's hooked into a second marlin. All of a sudden, my rod got nailed, and a marlin started jumping all over the place. All right, well, we're hooked up to another marlin, doing it all on stand-up. No fighting chairs, just you and the rod. He's just going out. Let's turn that clicker on so you guys can kind of hear what I have going on right now. He's slowly just pulling away from me, and I have this drag pretty tight. It's pretty cranked down. Hopefully he doesn't like this, and he turns around. See, the key is, is when we can get his head turned, his head's away from us right now. When his head's away from us, he's winning. He's going to keep pulling out line. And you're going to see it eventually. I'm going to get that head turned towards me, and I'm going to give it everything I got to crank it in. Because when his head's turned towards me, I'm going to be able to keep getting that line in. And he's hauling butt right now. I'm on the 30 wide. So the 30 wide only has 40 pound high seas leader on here. Not 80 like the other one. So we've got a lot lighter line. Gaining some back, finally. <laughs> These are strong fish. Marlin are no joke. Seeing a marlin jump is one of the coolest things you'll ever see when you're on the water. 
He's gonna come up, he's, he's coming up, he's coming up, he's coming up, coming up right now! Oh, yeah, baby! That's why we go for the Marlin, right there! They put on spectacular shows, and that's why we fish for them. He's brought me all over this boat. This fish is still going down, he's just digging. There's the clicker. I was winning for a little bit, but once you let him turn his head and he gets away from the boat, yeah, I got it back at me now. When they get their head away from him, he's coming up, he's gonna jump right there. They get their head away from you, they're winning. He's coming straight up out to the right. He's coming right out there to the right, he's on the surface. Give us one more good jump right in there, nice and close. It's a lot of weight here for 40 pound mono. Just doing my best to get this fish up and land him without breaking this line off. Oh, there he is, there he is. Beautiful shot underwater, beautiful. All right, guys, well, we got the marlin right here beside the boat. So we got Nick Roberts with us. He's uh, one of the first mates out here, awesome fisherman. And he's gonna take this rod from me real quick so that I can land this fish. About ready, Nick? Yep. All right, man, here you go. Oh. No! No, no. Man, it was a bummer when that marlin came off right below the boat and finally chafed through the line. Getting ready to grab him and the line finally chafed through. You know, we were gonna let it go anyways. We got the best parts of the fight, but it's nice to get your hands on the fish sometimes. For more fishing and diving action, follow along on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok at Captain Jimmy Nelson. Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson was brought to you by Salt Life. Live salty.